for Monday, July 9th, if everyone would stand to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let the record show we have all members present. Woohoo! <laughs> And while we're doing roll call, I'd like to introduce a few uh, new faces to the crowd. I've already taken time to introduce you to our Deputy Superintendent, Scott Springston, and our new principal at uh, Bright Beginnings, A.C. Barker. But I'd also like to give notice to our new middle school principal at DCMS, Faye Wells, and the new assistant principal at DCMS, Gilbert Steele. So I think that's all the changes and uh, new faces and positions that I'm missing, but I appreciate the attendance of everybody that is here. Did you? And uh, I do want to point out uh, two other things. Ramona needed to be gone today, and because of the change, we are changing our seating format a little bit on the gallery here. Uh, and Matt Turner needs to be noted too. Yeah, I just thought of that in my head as I'm looking around at the new changes. A familiar face, but our director of secondary education is new as well. So let's don't overlook that. Thank you. And uh, wanted to point that out. Ramona's gone. When we do hire a person for the uh, public information officer, probably gonna sit in the gallery more than what we've done in the past, just to save a little confusion and to provide the spacing we need for the, uh, <laughs> positions that we have. So that's what we have planned. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. Um, so our first order of business, this is our organizational meeting uh, to start the new fiscal year. And so we needed uh, election of officers. And we'll start off with the president. I'll move to elect Lisa. I'll second. <laughs> that was quick. I'll fourth it. <laughs> Third and fourth, fifth. Six, uh, okay, seven. we have a motion uh, for uh, from Ryan for Lisa Killian to be president, uh, and a second by Tammy. All in favor? And a chuckle by Jeff. <laughs> seven zero. And then we've got. Uh, uh, we also need to select vice president, um, and I would like to nominate uh, Tammy to be uh, vice president again. Second. Okay. Motion by Lisa and a second by Tracy. All in favor? All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. We can move on now. We've got the adoption of the agenda. We did have um, an addition. Is that, where is that at, Ms. Dr. Dirksen? Yes, I think we included it in the, the green folder that. Uh, okay. uh -huh. We wanted to add a uh, agenda item to section 10 D 15 approval of the South wind broadcasting proposal. We just received today. It's been looked over by the business office and by the AD and by the high school principal and I think it's being met with satisfaction. So we need to add that so that we can formally accept it. Okay. And I believe that's uh, the contents of such as in your packet there. And then we also had just a correction on the numbering sequence. Um, Deb's name starts with a D, so she left out all the Ds, I guess. So <laughs> she put that back in there. So that's the only changes to the agenda. All right. Okay, so I make a motion to adopt the agenda with the changes. I'll second. Okay, motion by Tammy and a second by Jamie. All in favor? 7-0. Okay, approval of bills. Tammy, were you able to look those over this month? Yes, and I had a few questions, but they were answered easily. So I'll make a motion for approval for the bills. Okay. I'll second that. Motion by Tammy and a second by Pamela. All in favor? 7-0. Okay, we'll have uh, Stucco reports starting uh, September 10th. Again, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, next up, we have recognition of visitors. Persons may present ideas or concerns regarding USD 443 schools. No action will be taken by the board at this meeting. Personalities and behavior of employees are not to be presented during this period, but are to be reported to the employee's immediate supervisor. The president shall determine the amount of time to be spent for citizen participation. Seeing nobody jump and run, we'll move on. Did we, Dr. Dirksen, did we want to do pictures? 
Yes, so during, uh, that, that, that'd be a good section there. We do want to do a group picture of the board, and I think we do have a camera here, so we can do it right now. I thought we'd do it behind where you're sitting right there and just move the chairs out of the way. That way we have a group picture of all seven board members and nobody has to be photoshopped in. <laughs> Are the chairs out of the way? Are the chairs out of the way? said was don't be talking <laughs> and look at you talking. I'm telling okay thanks for bearing with us on that yeah uh, oh, and while we're at it uh, there are two board members that haven't got their portraits taken yet I think Pamela and Jamie and you need to stop in sometimes so that we can get your picture up in the entryway there um, and just stop in the public information office at some point and uh, be glad to get that done okay I, I don't like having that gap yeah. there. And we've had that gap for a while. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> right. Whatever. At your leisure, please. It's okay. It's like we're jammies. It, it's going to be on that oh, wall right there. You do it the, however you want. I'm, I'm making no judgment on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on then. We've got the consent agenda, and that uh, entails the approval of personnel, including the supplemental personnel report, the approval of the June 25th board minutes, approval of site council annual reports for 2017-18, approval of board of education electronic communications and internet access, approval of transfer to con contingency reserve for iPad replacement, approval of Southwest Plains Regional Service Center letter of intent for 2018-19, approval of Kansas Early Head Start Home Visitation Grant Award, Approval of Kansas Early Head Start Child Care Partnership Grant Award. Approval of Head Start Early Head Start Ford County Grant Award. Um, approval of 2018-19 Bright Beginnings Early Childhood Student Parent Handbook Revisions. Approval of the 2018-19 Professional Learning Management and Substitute Management System. And the approval of 2018-19 Scan Mail Renewal for Virus Protection for Email. Okay, I'm sent to all these agenda items. Okay. Second. Motion by Pamela and a second by Tracy. All in favor? 7-0. All right, next up we have new business, um, the approval of website services. Good evening, everyone, board members, board president, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, on page 95 is the consideration sheet, what we're trying to do, <clears throat> and hoping Cabinet will help me out. They discussed it in Cabinet, I was not present. Um, but what we're, what we're trying to do is go a different direction with our website, web page, and the way we do, do things. And uh, the consideration is in front of you. I'm recommending that we go to Gabber Communications. I know they have a good reputation to this point. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I believe we can make this work if you approve it. We're looking at three-year contract. The first year will be $30,000, as you see there, and then depending what we do, I might need to have a little extra to move the content over and stuff like that, but I expect about $25,000 a year. This is a three-year deal you see there. I'll try to answer any questions that you have. What does Gabbard do? I mean, are they, are they a design firm? Are they a website design firm? You can look at Liberal. Pardon? You can look at USD480.net. No, I just want to know, what, what yeah, are they type gonna, of firm are they? 
What type of firm is Gabbard? What do they do? What is their business? Are they going to redesign website? our they website? They specialized in, in creating websites okay. that we need, like our uh, USD 443.org right now. Okay. Except ours doesn't seem to meet the need anymore. What we have... And this is just the same kind of company, but it's a more reputable company. In, in, in part, opinion. this came about because I've, I've been having numerous complaints about our website. Yeah, I understand. As we change positions and with the opening of the public information officer, I found out that uh, Ray used to have a little more involvement in the website than he was having the last several years. And so this was a perfect time to change, to have someone that can give it more uh, direct attention. And interestingly enough, I uh, met with the superintendents of Garden City and Liberal and found out that this is who they use. Uh, Liberal does. I don't know if uh, Garden does or not, but Liberal was really high on this Gabbard. And, and they do many school districts in Kansas and Oklahoma. So, mm -hmm. um, so, th so that's good to have that connection. It's good to be changing that whole interface because we're going to try something yeah, totally yeah. different. And it's very good to have our IT guy that wants to get his hands right in the middle of it. So, um, and, and that's as it should be. So I just went. We I've just been through a whole year of website redesign. Yep. yep. And if we can get it for thirty thousand dollars, is a very good price. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good uh, now. Price. One thing that Ray hadn't explained yet. That I don't want to take your thunder, but we're going to have to keep what we have for a few months. Sure. Absolutely. We can't just drop it cold. We have to interface it over and. Um, I think Who, who's going to do the color designs and all that kind of stuff? It, I'm telling you, this is a bear to do if you do it right. Yeah. In, in I don't expect an easy task in front of yeah. me. But, but I'm just saying people to pick out color schemes and, you know, all of that stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. sure they'll make recommend. Everything will be red. Will. I mean, I get that. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the administrators will have some input. Good. And <clears throat> he'll I'm, oversee the whole well, Things will be presented as we go along, like what, what's the theme going to be? What's a template going to look like? And once people decide on that, then that's what every campus will then look the same, except they'll brand their site, like Comanche has a mascot and so on. Um, I, I, I'm just, I feel like my role is going to be just to make sure it works and it's efficient. But as far as colors and what's going to be on there, campuses are going to have to help me out with that. Yeah. And this they're like going to have access to do it. Yeah. This is like building a house. It <laughs> it's the closest thing I've ever come to building a house. <laughs> I mean, because you're picking out colors and was this, you know, good luck and God bless. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing is I'm, I'm kind of almost comfortable because we looked at Gabbard years ago you bet. yeah and the reason we did not go at that time is because they were, we had to deal with e-rate and they were not e-rate compliant they were not the lowest <clears throat> bidder that's why we did not go e-rate is out of the picture now they don't support web pages anymore the other the other thing a person can do is hire a web designer and start from scratch on our own server but then the person leaves, then we're right back where we were. No, I, I, think, the, I think the procedure, I think what you're doing is great. I just, don't, don't let a bunch of men pick things out. <laughs> You'll get yourself in big trouble, trust me. Hey. Great advice. <laughs> Pardon? Great advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, run that tape back one time. <laughs> I, I, I'll own it too, brother. I'll, I'll, make, a motion on this I'll make a motion. Thank you. But I'll second. Just one quick clarification. This is actually the one eighty thousand dollar because it's yeah. three. Okay. But I'm talking about thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a that's an annual cost. Right. For three years. For three years. Okay. Thirty thousand the first year, and then about twenty five thousand the said next two years. Right. And where does the fifteen thousand come in? That's just on the maintenance on what we presently have, or is that the end of the three year contract? where we may still need their services right. or some touch-ups, well, or lack of a better term. In these kinds of things, they have to, I believe, by law, give me an addendum on the contract that if they do not meet our needs or can't serve what we require, then we can give them like 30 days notice. We don't have to continue. 
Okay. That's, I believe, a law. And just curious, did you ask Liberal what they're contracted for for three years or what their yearly rate is? Have we? But if they, again, if they don't meet the requirements, we can, we don't have to honor that. Is that what the question is? Yeah, looks good. Thanks, Ray. Okay, we've got a motion from Tracy and a second by Ryan. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Thanks. All right, um, human resources. Looks like Bonnie's making her way. Yep. Good evening, board. It's that time of year again when you get to, to hear me and talk about insurance. I apologize for my voice. We love summer colds, uh -huh. but uh, this way it guarantees me that I'll guarantees you that I'll talk a little less. <laughs> as you know, as an insurance committee, every year we take a look at the usage um, and our plan, and every year we come to you with a recommendation for any plan changes that we would like to see and any premium increase or decrease that we would like to propose. Uh, we've met on and off all year, and we met about two weeks ago to come up with a final uh, proposal to bring to you. As you're well aware, um, our, in, our reserve account for insurance has continued to grow. Um, it's reached levels that we've never anticipated that uh, they would reach, um, which is a good problem to have. But it is a problem because we know that, that those reserves do not need to be as high as they are. So in, with that in mind, we talked with our uh, advisors from, from Benefit Health Advisor and uh, looked, at, looked at some options and, and we would like to bring this proposal to you. As you know, a year ago when we knew our reserves were quite high, the first thing we did was made some plan changes because we wanted to benefit our participants as much as we possibly could. So we reduced some co-pays, we reduced deductibles a bit last year, thinking that that would stop the growth of our reserves. Um, that didn't happen. Our reserves continued to grow. So this year we would like to put the emphasis of our recommendation on a reduction in premium with a small amount of, of plan design change. So what we were looking at doing is we would like to recommend a premium rate reduction of 13% across the board. Um, we, we tossed around a lot of different figures because as you know, people will never remember a reduction in rates. They only remember an increase in rates. And we don't want to reduce it 10% this year and have to raise it 10% next year. Even though that's a wash, people won't remember it that way. Um, so we, we had lots of discussion about what the, the best possibility was. Um, our recommendation that we landed on is we'd like to see a 13% decrease in premiums across the board for all categories. We'd like to continue with the three different plans and the different types, whether it's employee only, employee child, employee spouse, or family. We want to leave all those options available to our participants. The vast number of our, the vast majority of our participants are in plan three, but we still have a few people in plans one and two, and we don't want to take that away from them if that's really what's best for them. Um, along with that, we'd like to reduce the deductible, make another small reduction in the deductible, uh, reduce that by $100 for individuals and $200 for families. We'd also like to see a coinsurance maximum amount reduced by 200 for single plans and 400 for families. So along with helping people out with their premiums, they're also getting some more benefits from their, their plan design. Um, in the, our conversations at the, at the meeting, we feel like this, I mean, this is the projection of, this will definitely hope to not grow the, the reserves anymore. But we don't know. 
because it will totally depend on usage. Um, you know, we could get hit with some really major claims and reserves could drop substantially. We could have another good year and reserves stay the same or grow slightly. We, it's it's a, a shot in the dark. Um, but that, that's what we would like to recommend. So I guess what I'm coming to you tonight for approval is to reduce premiums by 13%, make the, the stated plan changes on the deductible and the coinsurance. We'd like to accept the bid from Standard Life and Accident, who is our current carrier for our spec insurance um, and aggregate coverage. We'd like to re, uh, remain with our provider's care network inside Kansas and the Aetna RAP network outside of Kansas, which have, it's, it's phenomenal what kind of uh, percentage discounts we get from those, from those two uh, networks. I mean, like, we're averaging about 43 to 48% reduction of a discount in every claim because of our networks. And we'd like to remain with Maritain as our third party administrator. So when you look at the financial considerations, what we're looking at is an actual savings for year, for, per year in premiums of $1,176 for a single policy. Um, I will tell you that I've already received some emails from people who are concerned that says, well, but that's a benefit for the district. It's not a benefit for me. They're just going to take my fringe away. And I said, I don't think that that's going to happen. I trust the board that that's not going to happen. But I've already received some of those uh, concerns. Uh, you know, they've said, why didn't you just do it all in plan design and get my deductible really low rather than the premium? And I try to talk back with them to say, we're wanting to attract employees and teachers to Dodge City. And right now, our, our family rate and things like that are, are prohibitive. Mm -hmm. So we want to get those, those rates down for those types of things. Questions? I said in on the meetings, and um, I want to compliment Bonnie and her committee on the work they did. And, and you know, when you look at $100, Lord, that you, when you start factoring that out, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, spread across. Also, there's another factor that, that I, this is, this is a speculation. The exchanges that came from Obamacare are closing down. And the individual health market is not going to be as readily available or as friendly. And so I look for us to have more people on our plan as the, as the exchanges, the rates go up. And, uh, and, and so that's going to factor into our reserves. And it could help or hinder it. I mean, we could get some, some people who have some real health problems, or we could get the healthy ones back. They got, a, <laughs> I mean, you know, they got a real reasonable rate. Mm -hmm. And so I want to applaud the committee because they, they fought hard and, and it was a lively discussion and bantered back and forth. And what I appreciated is they took their job very seriously. And so, Bonnie, I want to thank you and your committee for your work. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, very much so. I've got a quick question, too. Um, I know they had an independent um, counselor or whatever that was reviewing some of the stuff. Is this, was this their recommendation, too, or did they work by you, or what did they ever find? I didn't know. We, we've gotten a, a very short preliminary uh, response from our, from our audit. Um, also, she was, as, she was a part of the meeting. She was there through teleconference. Um, the, the nice thing that I felt in that meeting was that she was very supportive of our type of plan and how we had it structured. Uh, one of her recommendations was to look at the possibility of going to a $75,000 spec level instead of a 50. But when our advisors from Benefit Health came back and said, I looked at the last five years, and if we would have been at $75,000 spec level, it actually would have cost us more. So with our particular group, it was their advice to stay with the $50,000 spec limit. Um, I'm not sure, and, and Bill may have to address where we're at on that. We're about a fourth of the way done with our consultant's work. The first thing the consultant was, you know, it was suggested by people that we should join a cooperative, you know, where we were with other school districts. We looked at that. That was not recommended. There was, look, should we just go back to a traditional Blue Cross Blue Shield? Is that a better thing? And we looked at that, and the answer is no on that. Uh, probably the things that we're going to look at now is 
one of the issues is more transparency in the whole plan and what we're paying for. You got to understand if you buy Blue Cross Blue Shield, all the sausage is made behind the scenes. You just pay a monthly premium. We're actually making sausage in the committee. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure we understand all of that. I think we're also probably going to do a study of comparing our rates policy with similar size districts or similar size employees. We see that as good information for the board going forward. Um, and we also are looking beyond just health insurance, but health care, which is something we may or may not want to do long term. But what effects would that be? What kind of cost? What are other people who are doing that? Uh, what are their experience? So there's some other things still coming down the pike on that. So I think this is the first, but it's, it's that's definitely not completed yet. Okay. So we're still working on that. Okay. Uh, the, we feel as a role of our committee mm -hmm. is to make recommendations to you yeah. as far as once a year come to you and say, mm -hmm. for the next plan year, here is what we think is the most financially responsible, mm -hmm. both for participant and for board. Um, so when we got the report back that right now this is the best a, a partially self-funded plan is, is where we need to be, that's where we went. Okay. And uh, we don't feel the, the need to be involved with the audit, right. except for that role, because that's what our role is. So um, yes, she gave us some input. Uh, we ultimately went with the advice of our current advisors. Yeah, and I was impressed with the professionalism of both Brian Hillier, who's our current agent, and Sarah uh, with Fee Insurance. They're, they're both of their perfect, you know, sometimes you get a consultant come in and it's you, you, you butt heads with them. They were very professional and I thought worked together very well. I will tell you, I did get a couple phone calls about the fringe benefit, so I don't know if that's a, a messaging thing, how that is presented to the, the district employees, but it's a concern for sure that they're expressing it. And it might be a misunderstanding how the fringe necessarily works on their side. Go well, ahead. I will tell you at the meeting, I, I made this statement and I'll say it to the board. And I said, I cannot see this board taking anything away no. from the employees. No. And, and I made that statement. Right. And, uh, and I, so. Well, and one, one thing that I think is unclear is that some people and some people see the fringe benefit package as your single health insurance plan, where it's never been stated that way in the board and in the negotiated agreement. It's been a dollar amount, which happens to represent the same amount as a single health care mm -hmm. um, plan. But that's, that's never been stated that way. And I think, I think that's where some of that confusion happens. So I think you're right. We need to be very transparent about how that works. And I, I feel like we as a board have um, said over and over how we want to bring those premiums down and, and provide a better plan uh, for the employees. And, and um, our intention is not to decrease benefit, but to make it better. If I might, part of the negotiations this year and the teacher negotiation unit's very aware, we've had this ongoing conversation we're actually transferring for the teachers the savings off the health care to help us clean up the salary schedule this year. So those dollars don't go away. They're just going to go in a different manner to the people. So that's at least the intention if the board goes with what the proposal is going to come from the unit and the negotiating settlement. So we'll, we feel pretty good about that. It'll be the same dollars. It will just go into a different way. I just lost Jeff. I can see him thinking. and I'm trying to figure you know. We had to chew on that a little bit. Yeah. And that's going to have to be communicated really very like clearly. when you see it because okay. it's, it's going to do a lot of good things. And I think there's pretty well a unanimous opinion on both the teacher side and the administration side of how it's going to work. So we could not have cleaned up the salary schedule with only the 3% but by also adding the dollars that we're going to save on health insurance. We can do a whole lot and we think we can get that a better system. So I'll take your word for that. Okay. Any, Any other, other questions? Oh. Questions for Bonnie? I'd make a motion that we accept the proposal for health insurance for the next benefit year uh, as presented. I second. Motion by Jeff and a second by Tammy. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks, Bonnie. All right. Next up, business services. Uh, 
I will try to be as expeditious or rapid as I can this evening, but if you have any questions, please slow me down, ask questions, and we'll try to cover everything. Each year in the July meeting, we basically bring a proposal to the Board of Education about how we prepare our published budget. Uh, we haven't seen the budget worksheets yet. In fact, we're going to a meeting Friday, for the first budget workshop uh, that's going to be offered across the state. So we're going to travel to that one. But as the board has directed over the last few years, our intention is to basically keep the mill levy the same. As you're aware, we base the mill set levy on an assumed assessed valuation that is given to us by the county uh, clerk and county treasurer. I guarantee you it will not be exactly right, but it'll be very close, and that's you'll notice it goes up and down a little bit, but that's the reason it goes up and down. So if there's any difference from that, please let us know. Uh, we did publish, as the board directed, the um, authorization to go to 33% LLB with the concept that LLB mills bring in more state dollars than capital outlay mills, so we may be transferring. We may have a smaller capital outlay budget and a larger LLB money budget just to basically generate more dollars for our local district. Any questions on that? That's kind of the assumptions we've used. If there's something that's unclear, I'd be happy to address that. And we just ask for approval for us to go ahead and prepare the budget under those assumptions. And again, if you have something different you want us to do, we work for you, so. I'll make a motion for approval mm -hmm. for the budget revenue. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Motion by Tammy and a second by Jamie. All in favor? Seven zero. Um, the next page you should have in your um, packet, there is an updated, um, we are required by law to bring in uh, the unencumbered cash balances to you. You'll notice on that sheet that there are some negative numbers. The reason they're negative numbers is because the legislature basically gives us money in July that we're supposed to post date back to June 30th. But on this report, we're supposed to use the actual cash we have on hand as of June 30th not what comes in later. So there are some negative numbers. That is a usual thing. That's nothing to be concerned about. Uh, when everything is done and the year is finalized, <coughs> everything will be in the black and positive. But I just want to give you that information. That first negative number is a little disconcerting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one of, the, one of the things on this, and, and all, all kidding aside, um, we get basically somewhat beat up because we have some negative numbers on this, and yet the state used to give you money in July to start your new year. That was what the first check was, you know, buy supplies, get ready for school, and so forth. They changed the state law, where instead of getting ready for school and spending money for those kind of things, with that money in July, you're still paying off last year's expenses. And then they beat up the districts because we say, well, if we, if we don't have money to start out the year with, we need to have a little higher cash balance. If you look across the state, school districts, I think, did the responsible things they raise the cash balances in some of these reports so that they have enough money to start the year and meet the cash flow needs of the district. So it's kind of an interesting thing, but that's kind of where it is. Mm -hmm. Any other questions concerning that? Okay. Um, next item, re revisions to school district meals pol charging policy. I have Kathy, if there's any question. This was mainly clarification items. As I understand it, Kathy, there's really no substance changes. But again, since it's one of those things with uh, United, let's see, the Department of Agriculture and all the things that come down, it needed to be approved by the board. So we would ask your approval on that this evening. <coughs> I'll move. Okay. Got a motion by Ryan. Anybody care to second? I'll second it. Okay. Second by Pamela, all in favor? 7-0. Uh, the next item is renewal of workman's comp insurance. We do have some good news. Uh, basically, the increase is a very minor increase, just a few hundred dollars on a $300,000 interest. So we feel good about this. We are with United Heartland Insurance Company. Uh, they've worked well with our people. I've really not experienced any difficulties with that. So we're asking for the board to basically ratify that we would continue with them for another year. Make a motion. I second. Motion by Tracy, second by Tammy. All in favor? 7 0. Okay. Uh, the next. Experience The whole district on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next item is our insurance rewrite. For several years, we used to have an insurance quote that came in March. 
And trying to budget for that was always a challenge because you never knew what was going to happen, what storms were going to happen, what the markets were going to do. And for several years, we've been trying to get our major insurance to correspond, correspond with our fiscal year. And this year, we were actually able to do that. And they basically renewed the policy for the rest of this period. So it really, we kind of came in at the same rate and maybe a little lower rate than we would have if we were just renewing in March. So we feel like that was a good situation and would recommend for the board to go forward with that. Bill, didn't we do that with some other? We, we tried earlier and then we hit some issues because that I think we were getting ready to do that right before we had the hail storms. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we hit some issues that suddenly they were, they were willing to do it, but the rates were going to go and we couldn't see any reason to pay a higher rate instead of running out the policy. Okay. It just was not in our financial best interest, but you're absolutely right. We did try to do this earlier. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve it. Okay. That's I'll second it. Motion by Jeff and a second by Pamela. All in favor? 7 0. Um, the next item uh, basically at the Dodge City Middle School, we looked at the, as you're aware, as you drive by, the new gymnasium is a little lower than the area that's immediately to the west of that. There's kind of a hill there. And we kind of looked at that at one time and we were kind of had a drainage system and we looked again because the last thing we ever wanted was water on that gym floor. Mm -hmm. We've done that before, that's not a neat thing to have happen. Right. And so basically we went back and had some additional drainage work designed and it's been installed and this is to pay for that um, additional drainage work. We think it's a good long-term investment for the district. So that's the reason that is before you this evening. Okay, I make a motion for approval. All right, I'll second. Motion by Tammy, second by Tracy. All in favor? 7-0. Okay. Um, the next item, and I know that there was some concern on this, so let me start off with some things that are in your packet today. Um, there was a good question to ask, well, can we afford to do this? As you're aware, we have spent an awful lot of money on a lot of buildings. We've had a number of change orders, nothing really outstanding or problematic change orders. But there was a question raised, where are we on owner's reserve? And there's really two places that we pulled owner's reserve from. And the first one I'd like to go to, there's a kind of a, a letter from Hutton. I think you should have that in your packet. In the, oh, yeah. uh, your green packet. Yeah. And Hutton at this point is kind of interesting. We are currently projected owner's reserve 141,000. We have been getting these reports on a biweekly basis for what to me seems almost forever. We're now to a point where sometimes that actually goes up with the meeting because as we are finishing projects, we've been successful. But some projects, we, we, there's a little money left over and so it moves back into owner's reserve. So currently in the Hutton owner's reserve, if you will, there's about $141,000, which we feel pretty good about when you look at the amount of money that's gone through. The second thing that you'll notice is there's kind of a piece of paper like this. This is from Tom Montgomery. And basically a given amount of money it was put into the project, was put in for fees, it was put in for equipment, it was put in for furniture, it was put in kind of contingency. And if you look at the lower right hand corner, at this point in the project, you see the original budget, which was 13 million, uh, 428, uh, You'll show all the things that have been paid are encumbered to date, which leaves us about $2 million. But there are a number of things that we have anticipated and we're taking out of that. For example, we have money to landscape, irrigate. Uh, we have some uh, Dodge City High School science things yet to take care of. And you'll notice we also have the Dodge City High School paint booth. I might mention that number has gone up. We didn't think it was going to cost that much when we started, but every time we turn around, there is another requirement, again, for student safety and our people's safety who are working in that, and that has been done. There's also playground equipment, Head Start playground equipment, and we do have some money, that's not just for weights, that is for the weight room at Dodge City Middle School, which I think we're gonna look at a different floor. We're doing some things there. We think we've got enough money budgeted there, which leaves us with about 264,000. And I believe at this point, we are about 93.5% completed. We're about 91% build. So we do have some project left. We will have some things come up, I guarantee you. But we feel like whatever comes up at this point, that we have enough money to take care of. And we continue the, we can con conclude the project without making any serious cuts or anything of that nature. Now, if you want me to, I can ask Ms. Feist to come up and why we need a paint booth. No. 
No, I don't believe that's necessary. But no. It is a requirement, and there are many safety features. It is being built uh, unattached to the building, and so that adds to the expense. But uh, it is something that will be used on a daily basis and, and really to coincide with everything we're trying to do vocationally we need to have this so right. um, I, I want to comment and uh, compliment bill and uh, you know to go to a project of this size to get to this point and to still have money in the uh, funds that we have and that, that's worth noting and yeah. something to be very thankful for yeah for sure yeah. anybody have any questions for bill on this make a motion okay Okay. Motion by Tracy, second by Jamie. All in favor? 7 0. Mm -hmm. Make sure don't Can I ask a question? Sure. There's a, I don't know what it is, it's on Sewell Street and it's kind of made out of, um, it's a gray, uh, kind of a light brown thing. It looks like maybe it's covering trash cans. There's a um, chain link fence around it and they've got stuff woven through the chain link fence. It's between Sewell and Northwest, you know what it is? What is that for? <laughs> yes. Does that have to be chain link fence like that? We can we can put something else there. We take um, just a little money from that and make it okay. Works. Well, we can check it back <laughs> with some options on that beautification uh, make, project. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Make it look. I mean, it looks so great, and then you go by and you see this little chain link fence thing. Like, what is that? I'd, I'd like it to be noted that Pamela wants to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, there, there's probably several options. We could do a wood fence or something of that nature. We could also consider planning some plantings around that. Uh, there's several things that could be done. So how about if I just go back and say, hey, we'd like that decorated in some manner and come back to the board with some options. So yeah. if that would be acceptable. You might ask Mr. Preston and Mrs. Armstrong, they could come up with something great that would I'm, look good between their schools. I'm sure they, it, they can. It has, I can. <laughs> it, has, it has been amazing trying to get gas into all the buildings. Sewer lines, we had more sewer lines come out of Central Elementary than I ever would have believed. And water lines, it, from the very beginning, in fact, the first sewer line we hit was down at Will Roads Garden. We found out there was some real issues down there and we replaced a sewer line. I mean, what do you do? You, you're not going to build a building and not take care of those kind of things. So. Anyway, but we can sure take a look at that. Happy to. Thank you. It's in the money. That's right. See, we get that approved. And yes, we do. Okay. Um, ratify purchase of furniture for Dodge City Middle School and the high school. There were a few things. Those were very large purchases, and when they really analyzed them, there were a few things that they were short, and this is just to clean up that. It's not a significant amount of money, but again, we're trying to be very transparent with everything we're doing, so we just if we could. Make a motion. Okay. Second. Motion by Tracy, second by Ryan. All in favor? 7 0. Okay. Um, the next thing is additional custodial equipment. We had that on an earlier meeting. Then there were some problems with the bids. We, we went back and cleaned that up. And this is basically equipment that's going to be necessary. We're adding 350,000 square feet of space. And so I know there were some questions on that. I think those have maybe been answered. But we think this is the equipment necessary to do that in an effective manner and maintain the kind of buildings that we would like to maintain in the school. Okay, I'll make a motion for approval. Okay. I'll second it. We have a motion by Tammy and a second by Pamela. All in favor? Seven zero. Um, here's a, kind of an interesting situation we came up with. We lost. <laughs> compressor at alternate ed bright beginnings as you're probably aware that in chiller sometimes there's more than one compressor anymore so we still had cooling in the building we also have another small compressor at that building and so my assumption was we'd probably just go out and buy a brand new compressor and put it in and what we discovered was it was more cost efficient to buy i call it a recondition they don't use the word recondition they have a whole different mentality for this but the bottom line is we're going to pay less money and we're going to have a two-year warranty instead of a one-year warranty. So we felt like that was the best use of school resources. And it is by Knipped Equipment, so it does meet all the original manufacturing of trains. So we think it's a good investment, and that's what that's for. Okay. Got to have a chiller. I'll make that motion right. as presented. I'll second it. Motion by Jeff, second by Pamela. All in favor? 7-0. Um, I'll see the next one here. 
we have a, do I dare do this tonight? <laughs> Explain the carpet. We have a, we've had a situation at the high school since the high school's been built with a certain amount of <coughs> moisture coming up from the floors and it's caused kind of havoc. And most floors that we've found the solution just to put carpet tile, remove the tile, put in carpet tile, it kind of has solved the problem in most places of the high school. But you don't really want carpet tile in your cafeteria and you really don't want carpet tile in science labs. So when we were going out to replace it this year, there was another product that they came up with, which is what's in front of you this evening. And anyway, it's, it's basically, it's kind of on the carpet tile situation, but it's really kind of a linoleum. It's a very thick thing. We think we're gonna be able to use this as a longer life product and the maintenance is supposed to be less. And every place we've checked on it, it's come up pretty well. It is more expensive. We're going to spend about 75000 more doing this, but we think in terms of longevity, wear and tear, and maintenance, we think it's a good investment. It comes apart, believe it or not, that's two sections, and I demonstrated cabinet. You take it apart, and then you pound it back together. I didn't hear the end of that for several days. So that I was worth know. watching. You ought to beg him to show you. <laughs> 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 but... That's, I just wanted you to know we've tried to research this and we are trying to come up with the best solution and we think this is the best that we can come up with at this point. And, and it is, I believe, a good solution. The tiles, believe it or not, are right at 18 years old and they're starting to pop up in the cafeteria. It's becoming more noticeable and that's not going to stop. That's going to continue. So we've got to come up with a solution. Is, is there any, it's a good answer. anybody telling us what caused it to come up like that? For instance, uh, the people who had the tile built? Or we've had engineers tile. in, and it, it seems to come up that it's, two things have happened. We've taken asbestos not only out of the top, but also out of the adhesive of tile. And that has definitely made a difference in things sticking down. I hate to say it, but that's, I, I can show you a high school I went to that was built in the 30s, and there was still tile that was tied on the floor, but it was asbestos. You don't, you just don't use that anymore. And the second thing is they indicated there was a certain amount of moisture underneath and that's why we went with carpet tiles. To replace tile, they said to guarantee it's going to stay, we would take up the tile, the concrete, part of the floor, you know, part of the dirt underneath that, put, you know, rock, put a vapor barrier. I mean, they were talking about re the cost of that was just outrageous. And we really haven't had a problem since we use a carpet tile. The problem is we just can't, we just don't think carpet tile is a good solution for a cafeteria and science labs. So this is, we think this is the best thing we can do. I think the warranty on these. I want to say two years, but I may be wrong on that. It, I, I could have told you at the time when Chris presented it, but I know. Is it better than the stuff that they pour on cement, that um, on bare cement? That, well, we do an epoxy on our Epoxy, floors, that's like correct. Like out in the shops for the same yeah. reason, and it's got the traction and stuff where you don't fall, with, you have snow coming off the vehicles and stuff, so that's what I'm curious. Yeah, I'm, you know, I know how much it is to lay it on in a shop floor, but that's why I'm curious to see how long that lasts because I know they've got a 10-year warranty on the epoxy. Yeah, and what we, our issue was that in order to guarantee it, they said we had to go all the way down to beyond the concrete. That was what the word that came back on that. And they've also, there is filler in part of that floor when they put it in, and the filler is popping off the concrete, so then you end up with unlevel issue. It's, yeah. Now, I've... If I had my way, I'd do trazzle, floor and port everywhere, but it, we, we couldn't have built as many buildings as we did if we did the trazzle. That's the best mm -hmm. solution. Is this like carpet and that pattern will be discontinued in 10 years? Yeah. Uh, when we need oh, I'm sure it will be. I, okay. Yes, absolutely. You, you, uh, what we try to do and with our new... It's not just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that it will take the wind blowing 70 miles an hour and going minus 20 or whatever the 50 mile an hour is in the other direction. So that expansion movement that will naturally occur in the building, that will give, for what we have now, there's nothing to do so it cracks and breaks and falls. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Can I have a demon on it? Can I have a demon on it? Mm -hmm. And when I was up at the high school, Jackie and I were talking about, we keep calling it the new high school, but the the seniors this year were babies or, or not even born when when that school was built. So it's not really the new high school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. But yeah, the the there are some. I mean, it's not just like there's a little corner of the tile lifting up. I mean, there's chunks um, that they have to cover up with tables and stuff, so it doesn't be a hazard. And so it's not a hazard. So yeah. Can this be put in before school starts, or is it? I think we're going to try. That's kind of what we're trying to move. If we can't get it before school, then we, we basically go to weekends or other times and work around their schedule or we go to Christmas. So that's that's the options. And how much is this a square foot? Um, it is not cheap. And I let's see. I don't know. You can back it up if you look at the... The fan. Let's see it in here. You have to do some. I, I can do some calculations and get that for you. It is not cheap. This is something that our custodians and maintenance can install. No, no, no. We'll have a we'll have a commercial firm come in and do this. Okay. Wow. And how long are they saying it'll last, or have that you had any kind of reports on it? I just don't know if it's smarter to go in though and do it. You know, I know with us. You know, I want something that's going to be twenty years. So I don't want to mess with it, but. You know, is it better to go in and do the surface right, go do it 100% right so we don't have to keep doing this every two or three years if it is that much per square foot? It, this is not a cheap thing. If we were to do the surface right again, the recommendation from the engineers that looked at several years ago is you take out the concrete, you take out the base, and then you put a whole new thing in. That is really expensive. This is a mm -hmm. fraction of that kind of cost. Uh, and I, I, we can get all those numbers if you want to, but that's, yeah, we, we looked at that and considered it several years ago. Mm -hmm. Barrier. Barrier is on the today's practice is on the opposite side of the street. So you can't fix the problem mm -hmm. without removing the barrier and the, the underlayment of the concrete and the concrete. So there you have it. Make a motion. Okay. A second. Motion by Tracy and a second by Tammy. All in favor? And what was the price, final price? The what? Okay. Oh, I see it. <laughs> okay. You think I Seven was? 7-0. <laughs> hey, you, you get used to spending this kind of money around here. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't get used to it. Maybe you do, but I really don't. Um, the next thing are two contracts at United Wireless Arena. Uh, the first is facilities use agreement. And this one is for the high school. I'll see graduation got first, I think. TOC's first. first. Tournament champions is first. Yeah. All right, I somehow passed tournament. That's what was causing me problems here. Uh, tournament of champions, basically what we try to do is always hold the events several years in advance. We ask for the dates to be held, but at least we try to get a contract at least one year out. So there's no question. And the reason I kind of like to have the contract at least a year out is there have been several changes in management at the arena, not recently, but in our history there has been. And I'm always scared of something getting messed up. And if I got a contract and I've got something in writing, there's no question about. So this basically just continues that for one year. And again, we do ask for the dates to be reserved other than that. I make a motion for approval. All right. Second. Motion by Tammy, second by Ryan. All in favor? Seven zero. The next item is for graduation, and again, uh, I think that we would can honestly say I'm grateful we're not at Memorial Stadium doing graduation. I've been there when the chairs fell over every time somebody would get up, yep. and United Wireless is a very nice place to hold that, and again, this is just a contract for one more year. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second it. Motion by Jamie, second by Pamela. All in favor? 7-0. Is that the end of my... Oh, I got one, two more here. Two more. Um, <laughs> earlier, the board requested some, a work session with Tom Montgomery um, on potential district facilities. Not that we're ready to announce anything or go forward, but rather just to kind of do some planning and kind of visioning on what we might need and what opportunities might be out there. And what we did is uh, he and Ryan are in town really about every other Wednesday as we review projects, walk through projects, as they punch projects. 
So we thought those would be some possible dates, but really it's when you, the board, are available. If these dates don't work, you give us a date and we will do our very best to get Tom at that point. He said he made it very clear he's available at your discretion. So <coughs> that's kind of for discussion and really to determine what you want to do. I thought we had that scheduled for the 11th. We don't? The 11th, uh, there's, the there's, there's two meetings. The 11th, uh, the 11th has, first of all, there is a meeting on um, how we handle bidding for subcontractors through our construction manager at risk. That is at noon. I've had one board member say they'll be there. I've had one board member say they may be there. I've had two board members say they won't be there. If we get more than three, we do need to announce a meeting and go through that process. So that was at noon. And then at 1.30 on Wednesday, as Dr. Dirksen said, we've kind of filled up his day. We're going to have the first meeting with Tom and Ryan and some of our people about the open house that we're planning uh, later in August. So those are the two things for this Wednesday. That's what this Wednesday was for. But this was really to look at the projects that were discussed at the work session and just have kind of a, a discussion about those and kind of what the board's input would like to be. So it's still the 11th? And what, what time was it? Noon. Noon? I have noon. 11th. Yeah, the, 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 11th, the 11th is at noon, and it, yeah. just, just let us know if you're going to show up. Like I said, if it's yeah. going to be more than three, more than three, we need to go. So if you're planning to be there, that would be great. Uh, I'll be there. I think it'll be good information, and it'll just, again, just an informational meeting. And then the question on this one is, you know, you, we had the various facilities brought up at the work session, and this is just kind of the next discussion step of that. Uh, Tom made an important point. He said, if you know kind of what's out there, there may be opportunities that present themselves where you can accomplish those opportunities at a much lesser cost if you know what you need. And at least it gives the board an idea of what some of the needs might be in the district in the future. And you know, if something does become available, then you'd know well, if you need to move on it. If you don't know what you need, you, 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 opportunities like that may pass. Again, just for your information and for your discussion about you future wanna, facility needs. Excuse me, you wanna do that on the 25th? That would be fine, whatever works for you all. Or that same afternoon. I, I can't do the 25th. That doesn't mean you can't do that. But. Yeah, I can okay. do it. And again, if Wednesdays don't work, he'll come another day. That's not an issue. And if you want to do a noon meeting, that's fine. If you want to do a 5 o'clock, 6, whatever is your convenience, he'll be available. So. I think the problem with a noon meeting is that many of us are limited on time if, yes. for discussion. So if you want to maybe 5 o'clock or 5.30 or... Whatever, six, whatever. Find your Doesn't sound like July is going to work, though. We're going to have to look into August. For me, anyway. What I'm hearing. Yeah, I would like to get through July. Oh, yeah. okay. You just have enough stuff. Yeah. August 8th, oh no. Yep. Then I can change that. Does August 8th work? 8th would work for me. Yeah. I can't. 5 o'clock? It doesn't work for me, but I'll change and make it work. Right now, the 8th. It doesn't work for you, Pam? No, but I can change it. What, what time did he say? Five o'clock? Oh, yeah, I can make it. Okay. We will, we will set that up then August <clears throat> the 8th at 5 o'clock. We'll set up an appropriate meeting at that point. And I think I am finished. I thank you for your attention. <laughs> I appreciate um, it. What about the Southwind Broadcasting proposal? Oh, uh, that did get, I think, under my area. Uh, basically, as you're aware, we changed radio stations a couple of years ago. And basically, Station A bought out Station B, as I understand it, and we were getting $1,000 a year. We now have an agreement where they don't want to pay us anything, but that's the new agreement, and that's what they're willing to do. Did I get that right, Dr. Dirksen? Close enough, I believe, okay. yeah. So I think it's came around, and uh, there is a copy of the uh, proposal that was presented. Uh, Jay Gifford sent this today. It was in your green folder. and. Uh, Actually, it took some work to get to this point, but I think we're very happy to be with this point with the new uh, change of uh, radio ownership. Um, seem to have a working relationship that is uh, going in a positive direction, so I support the recommendation that we ask for the board to approve this agreement. They, I know that last time when we made a change from one radio station to the other, it was kind of contentious and there was a lot of hurt feelings. I just want to make sure that the other radio station had a fair They're chance all the same. They're all yeah. the same. They're all the same. Rocking in bottom. Wow. 
And, yeah. and guys, I was involved in a lot of this, and we need. <laughs> we came a long way. Uh, yeah, we've come a long, long way. Me. I'm still not. I, I want to make sure they fulfill their end of it, really and truly, because absolutely, I'm. I, I won't say this in a minute. Yeah, well, and I, I appreciate that, Jeff, but, and I think what we have uh, is what we're agreeing to that's on this page. And so if they're not fulfilling that, then I think we have uh, accountability we can fall back on and then look at other directions. But Has Mark uh, signed it yet? Has he signed it? No, we're waiting for a no. No, okay. we're, we're waiting for board approval to sign our side, and then it goes there. They have agreed to it in, in content, though, at this point. So... That's my understanding. That's why we got it so late right, today. Right, right. I just, okay. I'll move that. I'll move that we approve this. Okay. I second it. Motion by Pamela, second by Jamie. All in favor? Seven Thank you zero. all so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bill. <clears throat> Dr. Dirksen? All right. I have uh, board policies for approval this time. I uh, think you remember seeing this last month. I can break it down to you in very simple context. In uh, all 29 uh, board policy recommendations for changes, only one is new, and it has to do with fraud. And it technically was just taken from a segment of another board policy, and they've made it a standalone. So I recommend that one. 16 of these are revisions, which a majority of the revisions are nothing more than the change in the legislative uh, identification. And then 12 were revised forms. However, if you look through it thoroughly, there are two policies that you had to make a choice between option one and option two. And so under GBO, GBO has to do with resignations and you, there were two ways you could uh, adopt a policy on resignations. And one is if you don't find a suitable replacement, you make them stay there and you make them work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Administratively, we believe if you don't want to be here, we don't want you teaching our kids. So we're going with option two on GBO. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And the other one was uh, under collection procedures. We do not hire an outside agency to knock on your door and to collect your fees. So there we're recommending option one. So um, that isn't spelled out in there, but that is uh, how we will adopt these. If you'll approve the policies as presented, it'll be option two on GBO and option one on DP, and then we'll accept KASB's uh, revisions as recommended. I make a motion for approval for the policies. Second. I have a motion by Tammy and a second by Ryan. All in favor? 7-0. Okay. Um, so section E, appointments and organizational procedures. Um, this is, uh, for those that are new, um, this is uh, just our regular um, start of the year um, appointments and assignments. Um, and so instead of going through each one individually, um, we can do all of um, Section E, which would be numbers 1 through 46 in one motion, um, if everyone is agreeable to that. Um, Dr. Dirksen, do you think I need to read through what all of those are? I don't believe so, but I think it would uh, be due respect if any board members has any problem with any of these items that you want to talk about before we do approve the list. These are requirements from the State Department that every school board must adopt. They've all been uh, thought through and processed, and in many cases, they are a continuation of how things have been done in the past. Mm -hmm. From the truant officer, um, obviously the school attorney is new, but we just made that appointment last month, so there's no problem with that. Um, the official newspaper, Dodge City Globe, um, we, uh, you've seen the list, you go through all of that, and. Um, I think it is just uh, important that every board member understand that they have the opportunity to talk about any item if they so feel the need. We feel like we have good checks and balance systems on the petty cash. Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. 
and the auditors okay. look over that and have met with us and we, we're in good standing on that in all areas. Was two the only two. <clears throat> I would so move to accept it if those okay. numbers E one through forty six. Motion by Pamela. I'll second. <laughs> second by Jeff. All in favor? What did I do? Seven zero. <laughs> I'll tell you what you did. You just cut the board meeting in about an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so section F, we have our Board of Education Committee assignments. Mm -hmm. um, Park and Rec Advisory Board. Um, I, I would like to um, ask Jamie uh, to be our first on that, and then we need another one. And then alternate, don't we usually do J? Gifford yes. is all mm -hmm. okay. Gifford. So, would someone else like Tracy? Okay, and Jamie, you're willing to do that. Um, uh, before the meeting, Pamela informed me that the next meeting is tomorrow. Okay. Um, if <laughs> okay. No um, if that's Thanks for taking the assignment. Uh, yeah. you're welcome. If you can't do that, maybe Tracy could do it. If Tracy can't do it, then Pamela said she could. Pick a ball. It's at noon. Where do I go and where? And Mariah and Hills all this. at noon. And where at? Mariah Hills okay. at noon. Okay, I can be there. And they do serve you a lunch. Okay. Go down in the bottom. Um, okay. Okay. And you turn that in. In the pro huh? shop. Yeah, you yeah. gave up a nice no, I just give Okay, up. and then on the Bright Beginnings Head Start Policy Council, uh, Ryan is willing yeah. to take that on. And Special Ed, we're asking Jeff to stick with that. And I'll stick um, as alternate. And you'll do alternate, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, and Legislative, Pamela has offered to do that one. Yes, she is. I get free lunch. There's got to be a lunch involved now, doesn't be a lunch involved. <laughs> um, capital outlay, uh, we have Tracy has said she would do that, but we need another one on there. I, I will. Okay. And we need somebody for a calendar committee. That meets a few times, like usually in the fall, I think, isn't it? I'd be glad to sit on that. Okay. The husband of a teacher does not need to sit on that, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pricey. <laughs> um, and I will continue to serve on the Kansas Heritage Center work group. Okay, so this is an action item. Make a motion. All right. A second. Motion by Tracy, second by Tammy. All in favor? 7 0. <laughs> wow. Okay, and then we need um, typically what we do on the monthly review of bills. You like if you pick August, then you get six months later in February, and uh, the six board members besides the president take a turn on those. Um, if you're ever not able to do it, let me know and I can fill in for you. So, August and February, any takers? I'll, I'll do it. Okay, Jeff. September and March. I'll, I'll do it. Ryan, October and April, I'll take that. Jamie, November and May, I'll do that. Pamela, December and June, I'll do that. And Tracy, I hope you're okay with Jan January and July. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And that's another action item. I'll move. Second. Motion by Ryan, second by Jeff. All in favor? 7 0. All right, we're ready for announcements. Uh, August 2nd is enrollment day for all schools from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. August 8th is new teacher orientation and introductions uh, at the Learning Center at noon. And uh, we will introduce board members that are present, correct, Dr. Dirks? Yes. Yep. Okay, then uh, August 12th, <laughs> district open house. Um, all schools will be open for tours from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. That's a Sunday. August 13th is the all staff donuts and coffee from 7 to 7.45. And then the welcome at 8 a.m. Uh, that's at the Civic Center. And again, uh, the board members will be introduced. So if we could have all board members there, that'd be awesome. 
Um, then also we have that night a Board of Education meeting here in the Austin boardroom at 6 o'clock. The 15th is the first day of classes. And then our um, first noon meeting for the year will be on the 27th at Miller Elementary. Excellent. Are there any items uh, for discussion or additional information? Next meeting. Is, is everybody set on the 8th being the, the work session? August 8th. August 8th is it? Time at five. What was the at time? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. All right. August so we'll 8th. just review that real quick. But that, okay. Yeah, so that will help yes. out. Yes. So Thank you. Yeah. Make sure you get that. And will we do that at the Learning Center? Um, location? We can do it here at the Learning Center. doesn't matter. It's wherever you Yeah, want. it'll be a work set. We'll just have the table set up like yeah. we did for the insurance or whatever, and we'll just sit around there instead here. of up here. Here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what are we having for dinner? Uh, hopefully we're out of here before dinner. How about so? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's probably that Jimmy it's John's call. It's a work call. session, Doc. It's, it's a work session. Well, do you want, you want food? I mean, no. uh, I'm fine. It's at 5.30. The last time we had a work session, it lasted so four five. hours. Five. <laughs> no, we're not. It's not going to last four hours. I'll, I'll give. We can that. order pizza if we. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. If it lasts four hours, I'm buying IHOP. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> IHOP. Nah. Uh, <laughs> still pancakes. Okay. Okay. So we need an executive session uh, for discussion of personnel matters um, to protect the privacy interests. Uh, how much? Ten minutes. Oh, okay. And who do we need? Your superintendent. Okay. So, All right. I'd entertain yeah, a motion. Yeah. Motion. Second. Motion by Tracy. Second by Ryan. All in favor? 